Now then, time to take a look at the papers. With me this morning to review them are the broadcaster and journalist Afia Hagen and writer and academic Mo Lovett. So very good morning to both of you. Lovely to see you bright and early on a Saturday morning. Um, so let's get stuck into um, some of the front pages, shall we? Lots of different stories around today, I notice. And Afia, you wanted to start with the Times, didn't you? Um, and this is focusing on the NHS. We've had a lot of stories about the NHS because of the various disputes going on and the pressures uh, there. So what's uh, the Times saying today? Yeah, the Times is saying this morning that we need more doctors. That's according to the NHS chief. Now, we need a big increase in the training of the number of doctors we have instead of relying on doctors from coming overseas. Now, there's a few issues with trying to get these more doctors into the NHS. First of all, there's something like 133,000 uh, places or vacancies for doctors at the moment, but there's only 7,500 universities places per year and only 16% of people who apply to do medicine are actually accepted so there's not enough university places to get us up to where we need to be to fill those vacancies and the other problem is the agency staff, so agency doctors and nurses, are paid so much more than they are paid do, when they work for the NHS, sometimes upwards of £5,000 per shift. So, of course, more people would want to work for agencies rather than use the NHS. So this is very problematic. It's, it's, it's sort of like chicken and egg. Which comes first and how do you solve this problem? And, of course, we would like our NHS to use talent from at home so we don't support brain drain from other countries and taking away the talent that could stay in their countries. It's a big problem that we have, 133,000 uh, places for doctors and vacancies for doctors isn't good at all. We need more doctors to treat the increase of people that we have that need treating. We have an aging population, we have people who are living longer, but of course that brings with it its own problems. At this time at the moment, where the NHS is on its knees, the, the wheels have literally fallen off. We need as much staff as we can get, but it's about a capacity across the boards in the NHS. Yes, we need more staff, we need more resources, but we also need more places for people to be treated. So it's a difficult one. Yeah. It's a difficult circle to square. Yeah, absolutely. And um, retention also an issue, isn't it? Um, we, we hear um, the Times saying here that Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, of course, known to favour an expansion of places, but hasn't made the commitment uh, since he entered number 11. So interesting to see if that position changes or not. Uh, Mo, you wanted to pick up on the subject of the NHS and um, with the, an interview with the, the Shadow Health Secretary, Wes Streeting, in the eye. Yeah, um, like you say, this is um, an interview in the I newspaper that uh, the Shadow Health Secretary has done alongside the Shadow Chancellor, Rachel Reeve, Reeves, and it's actually quite a brave and principled position, I think, that Wes Streeting has taken, partly driven, I think, by his own battles with cancer, which he's now thankfully clear of, um, and to take on what he calls a highly pressurised and inefficient bureaucracy, um, which from a Labour politician is, a, is quite a statement to, to kind of look at what needs to be done in the NHS. And actually he does address some of those things that Afia was talking about in terms of universities being known to not have enough places for students so that's one of the things he wants to do is to boost the NHS workforce by doubling the number of uh, places at medical school in the UK. Um, the other thing he, he's talked about a lot, and I think Keir Starmer was talking about this in the House of Commons this week as well, is to end this 8am scramble for appointments that a lot of us are familiar with when we try to get a GP appointment and it doesn't all suit everybody's kind of daily schedule. So that's one another um, policy that he's looking at, as well as bringing in um, pharmacies to take on more of a role where you might just need medication rather than a visit to your GP and what he calls like one-stop shops for certain treatments. So, um, and then there's other things like, you know, allowing a bit of Zoom calling and, and phone calls as well as face-to-face -face appointments. So um, it looks like it's not fully costed or we don't know where, where exactly where, where the money's coming from. But in terms of the scale and ambition and the kind of tackling what is a deep concern for so many people in the UK, you have to say this is a really brave and principled stands from West Street thing. and I think will really sort of um, spark viewers' interest, you know, patients' interest. Um, the one controversial thing he said is that the NHS works more in favour of patients than doctors, and he's had a little bit of backlash for that. But I think overall it's to be applauded.
Well, yeah, which is the headline that the eye goes with, of course. And really interesting that the kind of the real pressures this winter that we've seen in the NHS is sparking a, quite a debate, isn't it, about how you tackle it. Um, so I'm sure we'll have plenty more views um, th as the winter rolls on. In the meantime, Afia, you wanted to take us to the front of the Daily Mail, and this is the horrendous story um, of, of a poor young woman um, killed by, by some dogs. Um, the Daily Mail um, puts that on their front page. Yeah, a really shocking and tragic story about this 28-year-old dog walker who was walking seven dogs um, in Caterham, I think, at a local uh, beauty spot. And it seems that what happened was one of the dogs bit a stranger and then turned on her and all the other dogs that she was walking at the same time turned on her as well uh, and basically bit her to death and it's thought that while she was on the ground and being attacked by these dogs she was encouraging bystanders who obviously wanted to step in and help her to stay back so of course they didn't get bitten it took authorities about 30 minutes to be able to find her and by then of course it was too late another woman who was attacked has been released uh, from hospital, but a really, really tragic story of someone who was really just doing their job at walking these dogs, and also a story of how quickly things can go wrong in these kind of situations. That one dog attacked someone, and then the and then when mm. she tried to step in, they all attacked her. So a really, really tragic story. Here. Yeah, terribly, terribly sad. Um, Mo, lift our spirits a little bit with with some promising news that's making a, a couple of the front pages. Actually, I think the Guardian puts it on their front as well. Uh, the Express headline, um, obviously, I, I think it's particularly good news of, of a woman of certain age. HRT drugs may help um, fight to halt dementia, they say. Yes, and as a fellow woman of a certain age, I do too. Um, this is some um, interesting results from the University of East Anglia who have been doing studies on um, Alzheimer's patients. And they found that um, the women who have previously taken hormone replacement therapy have better brain function. Um, and it's early findings at the moment, and there'll have to be a kind of clinical intervention trial. Um, but it is suggesting that um, HRT would, in fact, equate to a brain age that is several years younger for women. Um, interesting in the article, it notes that a quarter of women carry a, a gene called EPOE. Um, which makes them more susceptible to Alzheimer's and dementia. And about two thirds of dementia patients are, are women. Um, but so this has kind of come on the back of, of that particular statistic and, and finding that if, you, if women had taken HRT um, when they were younger, then, then they had sort of enhanced attention, att att um, enhanced memory, language, unlike me, and coordination. Um, so yes, clinical trials will have to be ongoing, but this looks very, very promising for for, um, for dementia and Alzheimer's sufferers. Well, yes, and um, it's such a, a hideous, debilitating disease. If, if, if there is some progress, that's obviously to be uh, hugely welcomed. Um, I feel uh, take us to the Daily Mirror's front page. Again, a couple of the papers um, go with this very sad story of uh, Lisa Marie Presley, who's died aged 54. We don't have a huge amount of time, but just reflect on that for a moment. Yeah, another sad story. Uh, Lisa Marie Presley, and um, the paper's saying here, she died of a broken heart. She lost her son, um, who died by suicide uh, in 2020. He was only 27 years old. And she was really, really, really affected by uh, grief by his death. She really uh, took it very hard and blamed yeah. herself for his tragic passing. So, yeah, Lisa Marie Presley died of a cardiac arrest probably of a broken heart at only age 54. Yeah, it's, so, it's, it's very, very sad. She was very young. Um, both of you, thanks very much indeed for taking us through the front pages. We'll see you again in an hour. Thanks very much indeed.